In the heart of ancient Egypt reigns a legendary pharaoh with an elongated skull, shrouded in mystery and hidden from historical chronicles. After his death, subsequent rulers dedicated themselves to erasing everything associated with him, returning Egypt to polytheism, further raising the suspicion that he was a person drastically different from everyone else. While whispers of the extraterrestrial ancestry echo through the ages, a recent groundbreaking discovery in the distant lands of Europe reveals a mysterious connection. The magic of mystery awaits you in this fascinating story where every revelation raises more questions than answers. Are these elongated skulls evidence of a forgotten past or a mysterious message from beyond the stars? The ancient Egyptian ruler Akhenaten and the mystique surrounding him have long captivated historians, with his fame among the masses surpassed only by that of the legendary Tutankhamun. The unique vision of Akhenaten, which is of Akhenaten's other names, is what greatly distinguishes him from all other pharaohs of ancient Egypt. Sculptors and artists have traditionally been tasked with depicting pharaohs with broad shoulders and thin waists. In the image of Akhenaten, however, we observe a total separation from these norms. His physique is depicting with narrow shoulders, a bulging belly, unusually long and slender limbs, and a remarkable narrow skull elongated backward. In some of the carved reliefs discovered, Akhenaten even appears to have a woman's breast, making him distinguishable from the figure of his wife, Nefertiti, only by his taller stature and the regal pharaonic finery he wears. Unlike Akhenaten, other ancient Egyptian rulers are depicted on bas reliefs and murals with more typical human forms, without female breasts or elongated skulls. Akhenaten's peculiar appearance prompted the perception of him as a genetic anomaly. This, in turn, leads to fueling hypothesis expressed by ufologists that he may be an extraterrestrial being or a hybrid of an extraterrestrial and human origin. If you like what we do, support us by subscribing to the channel. He was the 10th ruler of the 18th dynasty and reigned between 1353 BC and 1336 BC. His main wife was the beautiful Nefertiti, with whom he had six daughters. Historians claim that Princess Kia had a son, Tutankhamun. This claim has been somewhat confirmed by a DNA match. During Akhenaten's short but impactful reign, many historical events unfolded, changed his name from Amon Hotep IV to Akhenaten, Pleasant to Aten, in the sixth year of his reign. A year earlier, he changed four of his five titles to have something to do with Aten and began the construction of a new capital, Akhenaten, Horizon of Aten, near today's Amarna. He centralized religious practices. New temples were also built in the new capital, and the worship of Aten took place under the glow of the sun, not on temple premises. Proclaimed himself the guardian of the sun disk, and in this capacity took the name Aten instead of Amon Ra. This way, as well as with the change of the capital, undetermined the power of the priests of Amon Ra and Thebes. In the end, the priest staged a coup against him from which he managed to save himself with the help of the Jews by donating the Ark to them, leaving the priest without a relationship with God. Later during his reign, he banned all other gods and declared himself the sole mediator between himself and Aten, forbids and depictions of gods other than the sun disk of Aten. After a while, he destroyed the inscriptions of the names of the other gods, especially Amon. After the death of the pharaoh, all traces of him were purposely destroyed, and the old deities are returned. Later rulers continued to erase all traces of its existence. These events further fueled speculation that Akhenaten was radically different from all other pharaohs, both physically and mentally, which did not sit well with many. This, to some extent, also explains why Akhenaten's reign was the only void in ancient Egyptian history. The cause of his death remains a mystery. Perhaps he was killed or managed to escape. 
A mummy discovered by archaeologists in 1907 in the hidden tomb of KV-55 in the Valley of the Kings is believed to be that of Akhenaten. DNA analysis computerized tomography and the same ATRH blood type led to research to conclude that this is the mummy of Tutankhamun's father. However, it is still uncertain whether there are Akhenaten's remains and no documents reveal whom the tomb belonged to. Strangely, this mummy has not received much attention from researchers. The only known research is that the DNA analysis establishing a link between the mummy and the Tutankhamun. If the remains do indeed belong to Akhenaten, they could provide scientists with a wealth of information about his unique skull and unusual physique. It remains a mystery how the trend for elongated skulls emerged in ancient Egypt and exactly what methods were used to create them under Akhenaten and his descendants, including Tutankhamun. The baby skulls are thought to have been shaped using some kind of boards attached to their foreheads. However, the shapes of the skulls of Akhenaten's children, depicted in a base reliefs and frescoes, suggest that the planks alone could not have produced such an extreme elongation and specific shape. Interestingly, pre-Columbian Americans and some African tribes practice skull elongation using planks, but the resulting skull shapes do not match those who see in Akhenaten and his children. Some scientists suggest that the pharaoh may have suffered from a rare congenital disease, Morphin syndrome, which should explain his unusual appearance. However, people with this disease are usually infertile, whereas Akhenaten had numerous offspring. Additional DNA analysis of the mummy, believed to be Akhenaten's, revealed no signs of Morphin syndrome. Given that Akhenaten and his children possesses the most marked elongated skulls among the Egyptian pharaohs, one must ask whether this was an inherent characteristic or a deliberate deformation from early childhood. The hypothesis widespread among ufologists that the cone-shaped head ornaments worn by ancient Egyptian rulers were created to imitate the elongated skulls of extraterrestrial beings also pushes us to the think in a completely different direction. If we look at another discovery, then the cause of Akhenaten and his family does not seem so incredible. The results of the DNA analysis of the elongated skulls found in Paracas, Peru, have finally been revealed. In the late 1920s, Peruvian archaeologist Julio Tello discovered hundreds of cone-shaped skulls in the Paracas region, sparking many theories and speculations, including, again, those of extraterrestrial origin. In 2015, more oblong skulls were found in the same area. After an agonizing six-year wait, the results of the DNA test have been finally released. The skulls were initially thought to be belong to an ancient humans with genetic mutations, but it soon became clear that there were more to these remains. The skulls thought to be more than 3,000 years old are believed to be of extraterrestrial origin. Notably, they have a distortion and an indentation where the two hemispheres should be, unnaturally large eye sockets and a missing sagittal suture. Some even believe that these beings could have controlled humanity and probably continue to do so today. This, of course, only one point of view, but not this discovery. Although it sounds fascinating, it will be our focus. Let's turn our gaze to something with a little more fact and history. Imagine a medieval Bavarian farming village populated mostly by blue-eyed blondes. Between them stand out more than a dozen women with dark hair, dark eyes, and a uniquely elongated skulls. This naturally apparently made them extremely noticeable especially in those times. A recent DNA study proposes that the hypothesis that these women, whose remarkable skulls have been found in Central Europe, were high-ranking contract brides from present-day Romania and Bulgaria, married to cement political alliances. It's one of the strangest things I've ever read, said Israel Hirschkowatz, an anthropologist at Tel Aviv University in Israel who specializes in ancient human anatomy. I don't accept it. 
Yes, the hypothesis has its supporters and detractors. These remains are part of a series of elongated skulls found in burials in early and medieval Europe and Asia. Bavarian elongated skulls were found alongside regularly shaped skulls near six contemporary southern German cities along the Danube in the late 1960s. They are dated around 1500 years old. There is very little information about the identity or the reasons for the skull elongation. Anthropologist and population geneticist Jochem Berger of the Johannes Gutenberg University in Mainz, Germany, aims to sequence their DNA. Berger and his team compared DNA extract from small bone fragments found in graves with DNA from modern populations in Europe and Asia. DNA from 10 males and 13 females with correctly shaped skulls match modern populations in Central and Northern Europe. Most of them had genes for blonde hair and blue eyes. However, the DNA of women with elongated skulls tells a different story. Their genetic makeup matches that of contemporary populations from southeastern Europe, particularly those in Bulgaria and Romania, and they possess genes for darker hair and eyes. But how do these women get their elongated skulls? Berger proposes that hypothesis of artificial cranial deformation. This practice, which involves repeatedly tying the skulls of babies together to encourage their growth in a constricted form, was widespread in the ancient world, especially among the Nordic Huns of Central Asia. In Europe, where the earliest records are from, Romania in the second century, this practice seems to have been equally common among men and women. In the Bavarian graves, however, the gender imbalance is evident. Berger points out that because of the labor intensive of ritual deformation, most anthropologists believe that it was performed exclusively on the offspring of the wealthy. The gender imbalance leads Berger to propose the possibility that high-ranking women from southeastern Europe traveled to Bavaria and married in order to strengthen political ties between the regions. Whether the Bavarian princesses also traveled east in return remains unknown. Hirschwitz does not dispute the genetic findings, but argues that the historical context does not match them. First, he is not convinced that the skulls were deliberately deformed. It is possible that the baby's skulls were accidentally elongated due to lying on hard wooden surfaces or being strapped into backpacks. He further points out that when ancient tribes did marry for political purposes, it was usually done by only one or two people at a time sending more than a dozen women from one generation would be highly unusual, according to Hirschwitz. Berger responds to Hirschwitz's point by noting that no single village in the study contained more than a few women with elongated skulls. If each village functioned as a separate political unit with its own alliances, the political theory remains plausible. Could it be that Akhenaten was so different because he came from a radically different race and region? Could the elongated skulls be the result of extraterrestrial intervention? Questions whose answers we will continue to seek. Let us know what you think in a comment and support us by subscribing to the channel.